This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, we go out to California as we love to do once a week and talk to somebody who just gets me talking and <laughs> is I think Because we're two of a lovable pessimist. Well you're you're one of the brightest people I know. Really? I mean you really are. I really, really feel like my IQ is about room temperature these days. <laughs> about room temperature. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> I really feel like a moron anymore. I think it's getting old. I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I the things I forget, I forget more things than I know. That's my problem. You know, I, I part of it is some medication I take. But you know, I I, I hate to talk about this once again, folks, because you've heard enough about it. But I took a fall last week, and and my hand has just been killing me. It's taken it a week to even. It's not. It's it's a bit better now. I couldn't lift a cup of coffee, but I can do it now. With a little bit of pain, so. Well, thank God you didn't have a break because the uh, human wrist is the most vulnerable bone. Well, now, but before we started this, you said that you came up with that yeah. factoid. That's why I say you're the smartest person I know because you have all <laughs> these all these little factoids. Where did you find out that the wrist was the most common? Uh, I heard that actually at a trivia contest years ago. Somebody said the question was, "What's the most fractured bone?" And I thought, "Well, it might be a tooth," but it turns out it's a wrist. Really. Because and it's because when people <laughs> fall, you yeah. throw your arm out to kind of catch yourself, and it, the wrist is pretty thin, and that I, goes. Yeah, but I didn't break the wrist. The wrist is fine. Wrist, wrist doesn't You're, even hurt. It's like the the area uh, 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 between my thumb and my first finger there, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that little flat part is really, it hurts constantly. You know. As you get older, falls are terrifying. Well, I mean, I didn't think so, but I, I guess so. You know, I apparently I hit my face at a certain point because it hurts. Yeah, my your face is hurting me too. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but but you know it, it, it it's um, uh, but I don't have a black and blue mark there. But apparently, I fell and I think what I did is my my my. Uh, uh, my lip uh, kind of hit the front of my mouth, and then I got a cut on the inside. But I can't figure out how I got all these bruises. But I think my hand may have impeded it because my hand is what I use to stop the fall. And somebody yeah, said, you just throw your hand out instinctively. And somebody says that when you fall, you should roll or something, tuck and roll. Yeah, because I fall like once or twice a year when I'm running, and uh, I always throw my hand out and bang that up. But uh, supposedly there is a way when you start to fall, you can kind of turn and you land on your side and you'll get hurt less. Yeah, well, what happens with you when you fall? Because what happened with me was I was wearing my, my Skechers, okay, um, and I, I was walking, and they kind of, I guess I kind of tripped over the front of it or something, because I guess when you're older, you don't pick up your feet as much. No, you don't. You don't lift them as high. You know, so sometimes you're shuffling. And, right. And then I shuffle, I and then and it, it gets caught on something like just even a slight ridge in the concrete, and down you yeah. go. You know? It take, And it takes very, if you're moving forward, if you just hit your foot a little, it that, that'll knock you down. So. Well, the first thing somebody, it's two people help me up. You know, oh, oh, there, there, old man. Let's help the old <laughs> man who just, you know, acted like an old man does and fell. And, you know, and they were there to help me. Very nice. But every time I've ever fallen, there's somebody there who's willing to help. You know, people are good that way. But anyway, they said, oh, I think you lost a tooth. And they picked it up, and it was my earpiece from my... <laughs> And I'm going, I lost a tooth? Yeah, well, that doesn't look like a tooth, you know. That's hilarious. I lost a tooth. 
No, my teeth are fine, you know, but somehow I hit the lip, and the lip has just been, it's, it's still swollen to this day, you know. It's not infected or anything, but, you know, it's just, it's just uh, what, what was the point I was trying to make? About uh, I don't know, fractured bones? And well, oh, yeah, fractures, so the fracture on the wrist. The wrist is the most uh, broken. Bell, yeah. Wow, well, that seems to make sense, mm-hmm. you know. But I'm, you know, I think I have always been blessed with non-brittle bones. Marjorie has brittle bones. I don't have brittle bones because I've taken falls which should have broken something, and it did. Yeah, mine, uh, my bones are fairly brittle. So. Oh really? Well, that's yeah, because I, you, you, know, you I've got and, osteopenia, which is the precursor of osteoporosis. Osteo, osteopenis? What is that? Yeah, it's the precursor of osteoporosis. Oh, I see. Osteo- and they yeah. theorize because I drink so much diet coke that uh, that sucks the calcium out of your body. Really, I stopped doing diet coke a, lo- a couple of years ago. Really? Well, well, I smart. found that there's seltzer with flavors. Okay. So I started doing the seltzer with flavors and also Snapple. And I used to suck you, you know, diet coke down like crazy. That was, oh yeah, I remember that, and uh, you were able to get off that. It's very addictive. Uh, no, it's not. You know, all I wanted was the refreshment. I don't think I ever had a problem getting off of it. Maybe I did, and I didn't know really? it. But oh, anyway, so, so now all, all I all I drink in the house, I've got a couple of cases of diet uh, Coke. Want me to send them to you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that I'm probably never going to use. You know, because I really have gotten into this seltzer, which is. You know, it, seltzer is water, no matter what. And they, if you add flavor to it, it doesn't change the fact that it's water. All right? So uh, it's a, the seltzer is very good for you. You know, so I, I basically I'm drinking water all day long. Well, much better than Diet Coke, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Diet Coke, I think, can dry you up. It has caffeine in it and things like that. Yeah, it's poison, yeah. Well, I have a seltzer here that has caffeine in it, but I that I, might help. I, yeah. I, I only drink that once a day, like in the evening or something, to give me a little little zest, you know. But uh, anyway, so here sometimes we, I would drink Coke. I'd mix regular Coke with Diet Coke, and someone said, "Yeah, you're getting the chemicals and the sugar, ensuring diabetes and cancer." Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, I, I don't know. Has anybody shown a correlation between cancer and Diet Coke? No, I don't think so. Well, I was at my, I was at my doctor's a couple of months. The dermatologist, she said, well, you're doing pretty good. I said, I'm drinking gallons of Diet Coke. And she goes, oh, that causes bladder cancer. That kind of freaked me out. <laughs> well, everything causes cancer, you know? Living causes cancer. True. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I well, I got prostate cancer. It was very minor prostate cancer, but it was a prostate cancer nonetheless. Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to get tested again the next couple of days uh, to see that I'm okay and that it hasn't, you know, come back in any level. And uh, but I think it'll be okay. But I mean, it, it you know, it, it still, even though it was a minor kind of cancer, it was. If you get prostate cancer at eighty, it's not the same as if you get it at sixty. Right. You know who just died of prostate cancer it was uh, William Hurt. Hmm. Seventy-one. And the question is, how? Do you know. How did he not catch it? Yeah. How Hurt. did he not catch it? Exactly. Yeah. Because usually, starting about age 50, doctors do a blood test every year on you and check for your PSA, and that's an indicator of some sort that you might have prostate cancer. And so when I hear about somebody dying of prostate cancer, I mean, the reason I had my procedure was because they caught it early. You know, uh, they caught it in its beginning stages. I think I had one, one slight lobe down there that had a a tinge of uh, of prostate cancer, you know, uh, and they were able to go get it. Uh, and that would have been the case with William Hurt, I would imagine. 
But the thing was, he was he was earlier on, he's 71, which means he had to have it around 65 or something like that. When you get it at that age, it's far more pernicious than it is when you're 80. If, okay. if you live long enough, Bubbles. You'll get it. You'll get prostate cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the question is whether it's going to kill you or not. And uh, the point is that probably it won't. You know, I mean, my doctors have said, hey, look, if this if this just kept going, probably something else would have gotten you before the prostate cancer we did, you know. Uh-huh. Um, because at my age, it's very slow growing, I imagine. Knock on wood, I hope. I haven't been tested in nine months now. I have to go get my test. Um, but, it, it, you know, a, lo- a lot of these diseases are preventable if people are just constantly checked. Uh, the trouble is, you know, men, men are not very good at going to doctors. Um, do you find that you, you have a regular regimen of going to the doctors? I try to avoid them. I'm just afraid See? of what they're going to find. See? Or, yeah. Now, on the other hand, take my wife. To her, going to a doctor is their only... Oh, women love the doctor, it's yeah. It's social occasion. Yeah. You know? Oh, you know, uh, and and you go, why are guys so anti-doctor and women are so pro-doctor? That's what I've never been able to figure out. You would think on a, a level of 1 to 10, the person who would be most afraid of a doctor would be a woman. You know, because they're much more fragile and all of that. But guys, guys don't want to don't want to hear from doctors. They go to see the doctor when something hurts. And by the time it hurts, it may be untreatable. It's too late. Yeah, exactly. Well, who else? Uh, Frank Zappa died of prostate cancer, right? I don't know. I really don't know. And I think he was in his 50s. Yeah. But it is it is at once the most, uh, uh, not, I want to say, don't want to say the most deadly, but it's the one that claims the most victims, uh, males, just about the most every year. Oh, and, really? Wow. And yet it is the most preventable. You know, if you just are on top of it from, from age 50, and now they're suggesting 45. I mean, let me ask you, when was the last time you had a PSA test? Uh, I think they do it in the regular blood panel, so I had, I don't even check to see what the number, well, they, of course, if they're bad, they tell you. But. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I get a blood test once a year. So. Uh, do you know what a PSA is? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I think it's. If, if, I think under five. That's a good number, right? No, under four. Under, under four. four. Okay. Yeah. Prostate specific antigen. It it's not a very good test. Uh, it's only an indicator something might be going on, and that they should test further for it. Um, and I had a very good urologist. He said, I don't like to do biopsies unless I absolutely have to, he said, because people are afraid of them. And I, I liked him for that. And finally he said, I got some results back, and I think we better do a, a, a biopsy. And he did the biopsy, and he found the cancer, and it was just a, in just a, one small amount and a little bit of the, of the prostate. And he sent me to this doctor who did uh, seed implants and, Radiate, radiation and so on. So I had the radiation and the seed implants. So I had a double whammy of this. Like, we're going to bludgeon this thing to death. And um, I, I was good to go. Uh, I did tell you that the guy who did my prostate seeds was the guy who did Rudy Giuliani's. Wow. Yeah. And I've never mentioned it to him. <laughs> I never <laughs> mentioned it to him. I just said, oh, I've heard of you. <laughs> that was my, you know... Uh, but, you know, I, I, there was a point at which I was going to say, couldn't you have just not done the seeds on Rudy Giuliani and done us all a favor? <laughs> you know, but he, Rudy Giuliani's still alive? Thank God, you know. But then again, when you drink the blood of your daughters, uh, you know, it's got to be, got to be life-saving, life-affirming. But, uh, no, so, I mean, but men just don't like, to go to doctors, and but I because, because we know we're going to get bad news. We don't want to hear it. Well, I have a doctor I see once a year, 
and he's okay. Uh, but like he, like I've always had. This is something, folks. I don't know if we want to talk about this, but I have had blood in my urine, trace of blood in my urine. I have had this for, if I had to say it, to my knowledge, for the last th- uh, twenty years. Okay pretty regularly very seldom they ever do a, a urine sample and i keep telling my doctor don't worry about it uh, this is i have this all the time and it's coming from somewhere but it's not anything dangerous okay i'm still alive 20 years later but i had this one doctor who liked to do cystoscopies on me every time he found it and i went jesus can you find another way to make a living <laughs> you know, uh, oh, that sounds painful. It's not painful. It's just annoying. You know, and 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 uh, one of the times he did it, he got me infected, and I had to have antibiotics to do away with the infection. Jesus. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, but uh, uh, I just you know I've always had this blood in my urine. It's a constant, and he knew that, but he still said, "You better go see your urologist." Well, you know, I told my urologist I had when he was testing my urine. You probably find blood in there because, and one time they didn't find blood in there, you know, for some reason or another. But it's just a trace of blood. It's not like you can see it physically. It's got to be coming from somewhere. But he goes panicky. You got to go see your. Better tell your urologist about this. We better take another urine test. I said, don't you remember? Don't you have it in your notes? You know, you know those copious notes you take. That says, hey, he always has blood in his urine. <laughs> and that's always uh, reassuring when the doctor sounds panicked, right? <laughs> it could come from my kidneys is where I'm thinking, you know. But anyway, so... Um, uh, well, uh, you know, sometimes that's the start of a kidney stone, a little blood, and then... Uh, yeah, yeah. If the stone's small enough, you'll pass it and not know it, so maybe that was that. I mean, it could be from my prostate. Who knows? I, you know, I, I have no idea. But... Uh, you know, I just, it's just one thing after another. But then I, you know, so uh, the urologist is the one guy I can't stand. But in my case, I found a good urologist I can stand because he is so reassuring and, and, and he doesn't do stuff he doesn't have to do, you know? And that's good. He saved my life, all right? That's for starters. Uh, and, and he did it without panic. I mean, I went through this whole thing to, to dealing with the cancer very easily. Marjorie said, I can't believe it. You're the biggest hypochondriac in the world. You get cancer and you just float right through it. Mm-hmm. You know? You got more upset over smaller things. Oh, I, I, everything else is, look at this thing on my finger. You think it's cancer? <laughs> you know, I drive my wife nuts with this stuff. But, you know, that thing didn't, for some reason, I just went... I get, it's being taken care of. You know, in fact, I looked at my, my uh, oncologist uh, in our first meeting, and I said, so is this the thing that's going to kill me? And he looked at me with this quizzical look on his face and went, no. <laughs> so that kind of, re, that was reassurance for me, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. that he found that I was being an idiot for asking, is this what what's going to kill me? You know. But every morning, you know, at eighty-two, I, uh, you know, I'm. Did you know me as a hypochondriac? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I was that way back when. And as you get older, whatever traits you have get worse. They amplify themselves. Okay. So it's like I wake up at eighty-two every morning and go, "What is it that's going to kill me?" You know, <laughs> I just feel like there's the Grim Reaper behind my back with his scythe. Just kind of waiting, tapping his toe. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> come on, old man, get something. Come on, what can we throw at you? Okay, hey. you know. I mean, my heart has been tested. It's fine. If we took care of the prostate cancer, I think probably, knock on wood, my prostate is fine. Let me see, what else is there to get me? Oh, my kidneys. I, I have mild kidney dysfunction. But. Then again, I think as you get older, your kidneys start to go, you know. Everything starts to go. Oh, everything starts to go. I mean, you know, the good Lord 
didn't put a uh, expiration date on stuff, you know. Uh, but I mean, it's it, it, uh, look. I'm 82. I've I've lived this long. That's pretty good. That's amazing. What do you mean it's amazing? It's not amazing. Tell me that when I'm 95. Amazing is reserved for 95. Well, 100 years ago, people, the average uh, death uh, age was uh, 47. So. Was it 47? Yeah, 1900 was 47. 1900 47, and now it's what? It's, uh, it's uh, 80. It's over 80 per I thought it was. I thought it was 70-something. I thought it was still like... 78 or something for women and 70 women women are over 80 in america yeah men are like high 70s why is that well medicine's got better i i guess we uh, we take better care of ourselves yeah and yeah, maybe it's the women that kill us yeah women are killing us <laughs> <laughs> oh well folks i, I i've just been uh, the me too movement will now be boycotting this program because I've made a joke about women. <laughs> that got to be shut down. Well, no, but I mean, the thing is that uh, uh, I think the reason, I'll, I'll tell you the reason I think men die younger. Men bear the brunt of the psychological imperative that they have to take care of their family. They're the ones that have to work themselves to death. No, oh, very stressful. Now, and you say, well, no, women now can bear that burden too, but they don't. It's still a world in which the guy goes to work and brings home the food and stuff for the, you know, it it it's a agrarian system. See if you can follow me on this one. <laughs> it's an agrarian system. Remember the time when you had a farm, and what was mom's job? Mom was to uh, cook and. Uh Basically, she took care. Her d- dominion. Take care of the kids. The, her dominion was the house. Okay, she took care of the house. And what did dad do? Dad brought the food in. He took care of the of the what they were growing or the, what the what was the product of the farm. He took care of the farm, as it were. Okay, now we come to today. It's not much different. Women stay at home, a lot of them, and cook and t- raise the kids and do that sort of thing. And dad goes off to work and does whatever he does to bring home money to take care of the family. Now, you say, well, a lot of that has changed. Women are in the workforce and so on. Yes, that's true. But it still hasn't tra- changed that terrifically that it, it doesn't, uh, say, take a toll on the lives of men. So, you know. Call me old-fashioned, but I think that a lot of women, once they have kids, would prefer to stay home and raise those children because they have a maternal instinct, which, by the way, is natural to women, but a paternal instinct is not natural to men. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And I always used to get heat for saying that, but it's true. We are the only animal uh, on the planet that doesn't have... That, well, to begin with, we don't even have a natural maternal instinct. But women do feel the need to be maternal because of what they've been taught by their mothers and so on and so forth. Boys haven't. Guys haven't. So, so yes, we saw, never we, had any desire to have children. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I, I think that the Me Too movement's a wonderful thing, but where they're screwed is they don't take into consideration human nature and and the the facts of nature you know uh boy this phone is just it doesn't stop ringing on my wrist here i should have turned it off um could be the air conditioner could, no i don't think that was the air conditioner it was some zip code that was far far away so what the hell Anyway, so uh, anything new with you, Larry, as we have about a minute left here? Anything? <laughs> no. Well, well, maybe, I, I'll, maybe I'll get paternal feelings now. <laughs> I'll do this. I'll do this like we always do it, like we used to do on radio. So where are you playing, Larry? <laughs> I'll be playing at the Chuckle Hut in Fremont. The Chuckle Hut? Uncle Funny's <laughs> Chuckle Hut? Yeah. Speaking of which, our old friend, uh, just her Tommy T, had uh, triple bypass surgery. Hmm. Wow. I'm, he's still alive? Still alive, yes. Triple bypass surgery. 
He made it through the surgery, but that's uh, pretty brutal. Yeah, it is pretty brutal. Uh, Tommy T owned a comedy club, uh, or several of them, actually. Uh, yeah, the... Uh, the main one was in San Leandro, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It was San Leandro, then it was Newark, then it was Pleasant, and as I used to say the classic migratory pattern of someone trying to avoid child support. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's our old pal, Larry Bubbles Brown. Larry, always a pleasure to talk to you. A pleasure to talk about our pessimistic viewpoints. Everybody feels better about life after yes, listening to Alex and Bubs. Thanks. <laughs> th- th- thanks, Alex. Thanks, you, Bubsy. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk. Like you've never heard it before. Yeah, okay. Oh, let me turn on my lights. There we go. Huh, now we're ready to go. See, I t- just turned on the lights. You may notice nothing changes in the background when I turn on the lights, but that's because that's a phony background. I love demystifying what we do here. Uh, what is it we do here? I haven't figured out what we do here. Neither is the audience who listens to me. But... Uh, I just keep doing this for the few people left who even care who Alex Bennett is, okay? And uh, I, 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 I don't live with any, uh, how can I call it, uh, any illusions uh, that anybody really wants to listen to this program anymore because the numbers are pretty low lately. Uh, and, uh, and the amount of callers that are calling is, is less than it probably should be. And uh, I... Uh, I've often thought about, you know, maybe it's time to pack it in, you know. Last night, I'm doing, I'm do, after the show is over here, I, I do what I call posting the shows, okay? And, and I put them up so that you get them on the, uh, the uh, gabnet.net page, and so you can get them on, uh, on uh, uh, iTunes, and you can get them on all the other places that our show is posted to. And I have to do a whole bunch of stuff with that. And there was one process that I got to, that I do every night, okay? And I got to it, and all of a sudden, I froze up. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Uh, And it was a a thing that uh, uh, puts the audio on for the uh, on-demand, among other things. And I was just going, how do I do that? Where do I go? I couldn't remember how to do it. And I'm thinking to myself, Man, I am just starting to forget stuff, you know. And it made me feel very old, and it made me feel very doddering. And uh, I, I, you know, I kept saying to myself, maybe, maybe it's time to cash it in, you know. Not because this isn't working. I could just do this for the hell of it, you know. What the hell? No big deal. But uh, I just, you know, I just was thinking... I often said to people, let me know when I no longer have it so I don't stay longer at the fair than I should, you know? And uh, I I think the smart people in this business are the people who quit at a time when they feel they no longer have a, a, uh, what could I call it? A, um, um, uh, their chops, okay? Uh, And, and, uh, you know, please tell me you know, because I'll be happy to just say that's it and cash it in. I don't want to stick around where people listen to me and they go, boy, he used to be really good, you know, but he's terrible now. He sucks. In fact, you know, I have a thing here. It's called a poll, all right? And uh, wait a minute, I can go over to the uh, to the chat room here. Hold on a second. Here, I can put in a poll. Um, uh, let me see here. Oh, the question should be, should I quit? <laughs> I shall should I give up? Okay, I think that's the best way to put it. Okay, question, and then you can go yes or no. See, so it says ask your community, and the community is now, I guess, has that question up there. Yeah, yeah. So you can go on there on the chat room and you can vote yes or you can vote no. There's there's no maybe there. Anyway, I think it's time for us to uh, check in with our citizen panel. We have a few more than usual to start out with tonight. So, you know, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, there they are. 
Yes, there's Josh Wheeler, and there's, uh, let's see here, there's Kevin. He's leaning over there, and uh, there's, uh, there's uh, Jeff, and, of course, uh, Alan. Hello to all of you this evening. How are you? Good. Good? Yeah, well, you were ex sound excited. I I, I, I I talked to Phil earlier, and he said he might join us. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if he joined us. You know what he suggested uh, today is, uh, is April Fool, as you know. Yes. Uh, and and he, he suggested that I I go on the air and announce that this is the last ramble. Over there. And, and I don't do that. Yeah. Uh, somebody's got their speaker up. Is it you, um, uh, Jeff? I'm okay. Are you? Kevin's mm -hmm. thing keeps flashing. Kevin's thing keeps flashing? Yeah. See, somebody's got it. Somebody's got it on. Uh, let me see here. I, I don't know which one it is. I can't, uh, it's, can't tell. It's me. I'm just, my batteries went dead on my mouse. Bear with me a second. Okay, your batteries went dead on your mouse. <coughs> well, uh, just, uh, yeah. Anyway. I it, find the batteries come out of the mouse real quick if you throw it against the wall. Yeah, yeah. It's a good, good time to replace them is when they fall out of, out of it. Anyway, um, but anyway, Phil suggested that tonight I say this is the last ramble, and then at the end, of the, then at the end of the show I go, you know, April Fool, right? Well, I did that one year in San Francisco, oh and it took me six months to get my audience back. I remember oh. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, the ratings are, you know. Because everybody knows oh, this is his last show. Oh, I'm not going to tune in. And they never heard it resolve itself, you know, for me to say, well, or I was going to do it the next day, say April Fool, you know. But so I lost an audience for quite a while. So I learned my lesson that you don't do that kind of prank. But I did go into Marjorie today while she was on the phone to a friend of hers. And I said, did you, the news, it just came across. So what? Donald Trump's dead. Okay. And and she went, what? And I went, April Fool. Oh, you yeah. got me. You know. It's too bad she didn't push you out of the way and head for the champagne cellar. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. So we had the uh, we had the uh, the super in today for about two hours. I threw uh. him a couple hundred bucks and had him uh, install an air conditioner for me. And uh, a, a ceiling fan with a light on it in the dining room, and uh, also unplug a sink, which has been backing up a lot. And he went down there, and I think he pulled out small animals, if I'm not mistaken. You know, so that was our day. That was, and this was the first day what Marjorie calls her retirement. And all day she was on the phone trying to get everybody their paychecks because somehow something had gone wrong with getting them their paychecks. So, so her first day of her retirement isn't exactly retirement, so. I, uh, but that, so she spent all day on that. It wasn't anything that was her fault, it was that this is the time of year where they all get their bonuses, so the amount of money that was being taken out to pay them was more than it usually is, and the company that issues the paychecks wouldn't accept it unless there was a wire of money and things like it was a whole complicated deal but her first day off they had her back at work again so so much for isn't being this, able to live without her what isn't this for a bank yeah yeah so a bank had trouble well, properly uh, transferring money well no this wasn't it it's a company called paychecks or something that does all yeah. the check writing but the the money is also in china so it has to go to them, because Marjorie used to have the money here and take it, I think, out of accounts here. But the reason part of her job was done away with, about three quarters of it, was because they decided to start doing the accounting in Hong Kong. Well, you got to launder it first. You got to launder it first, <laughs> exactly. Good. Ass. Yeah. So, so how are yeah, you? Yeah, now my my what? company, they do all their. Uh, accounts payable and accounts receivable in Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur and it's like why do they do it in whatever. Kuala Lumpur to begin with they're an American company aren't they well they're worldwide I mean 
they're in like 80 countries or whatever. Which, which but company? I, which, I don't know. And then which, anytime there's a problem, they'll email you in the middle of the night. And then you go to work and you find it. And then you email. You know what I mean? It's just, but, I don't well, Wait a minute. But wait a minute. What, but what's, the, what's your company again? Which one? I work for Sherwin Williams. Oh, well, then it, it's okay then because they cover the world. Right. Yeah, right. Do they still yeah, have Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they still have they, that. They just stuff. have a. A division over there yeah. that instead of doing it out of the regular corporate headquarters, I don't know why they they moved all that to Kuala Lumpur a couple of years ago. And wow, you just wow. you know you get emails. Was from it, is, like, there, is their slogan still "We cover the world"? Uh yeah, they they still have that uh, yeah. logo or whatever. It was yeah. a picture of a bucket of paint, yeah. slopping paint over the globe. That's right. And it said, "We cover the world." Yeah. So I guess they've always given an international company, right? Yeah, for a long, long time. Yeah, really long time, yeah. Excuse me, I've, I've been sneezing tonight and having a cold kind of symptoms, and I think it was from this. Have you had any? Uh... Me too. Really? <laughs> yeah. I even did the uh, the COVID test last night and tonight. Nope, nothing. Well, of course not. You, you Well, you had the booster, right? Yep. Did. Yeah, so you don't need to test yourself. Uh, have you had, the booster takes more than a day to go to work, though, because it's two days yeah. ago I got the booster. So. You got your th uh, second booster, right, Phil? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Like usual, Secretary Allen let him know. Yeah. yeah. And did you uh, did you uh, get high? Do you feel like you have a cold or anything? Or no, uh, no reaction this time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel pretty good. I, you know, I, I wanted to get on tonight because I wanted to be on the last ramble, but uh, yeah. you're a killjoy. <laughs> well, no, you know, I, I did that once, and it was, it did not work I, out well I, I for me. I heard you say. It did I heard not you work out well. I, well, I, you know, that's when you had an audience. Now maybe you get an audience if, uh, <laughs> if you, if you tried it. Yeah, yeah. But it's too late. <laughs> maybe you ought to announce that. Barack Obama is going to be on next week or something. No. Nah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, your date on your date on the um, on the YouTube says one one instead of four one. By the way, it says one one. Yeah. Oh, really? Ooh. Technical difficulty. Oh, son of a bitch. Well, that's my that's my April Fool's joke. That's right. that's what I put in the chat. Yeah, Charlie mentioned it too. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can change that. <laughs> Let me see if I can change that. Uh, <clears throat> If I uh, go no, here. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to distract you now. Well, no, you guys don't worry about it. I get distracted all the time. Well, let <laughs> me see here. Here it is. Let me uh -oh. uh, let me put it as a four one. See, I mean, these are things I'm doing where I'm screwing up a lot lately, and I don't <laughs> like that. You know. So anyway. Squirrel. Hmm. Uh, Welcome to your sixties. Uh, no, so, Discard changes. No, I don't want to discard change. Oh, I see. Save. Okay. And then uh, I go boom, boom, boom. I go like that. And it should have changed itself, I think. Uh, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, what is this? None of the, Oh, I see. Okay, hold on a second, folks. I got to go to the uh, channel content. There we go. And uh, is it uh, is the date been changed? Yeah, it's now 4-1. Okay. No, it's changed. Yep. So, yeah, I just did it. See how I do these things while it's I'm on the magical. air. It's magical. Huh? It's magical. Is it, isn't it magical? It's amazing. Uh, but Good anyway. thing Kevin came on the show tonight or everybody would have been confused. How many times can I vote in your poll? I mean, do you only allow once or can we do it like the Democrats do and vote about 16 times? Well, uh, yeah, how many? No, I think you only Should I die or something? I, I think you can only vote once, but it's 94% uh, no for me quitting and 6% for me to I'll quit. I'll just sign in as my six other, my other <laughs> aliases. I'd like to know who the son of a bitch is that said I should quit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was Phil. Republican. It was Phil. Yeah. You have the wrong date for tonight's show, says Charlie. Is that Char our Charlie? Yeah, I believe so. Charlie. He's probably on the field. He's on the field umpiring from his phone telling you that. Hmm. <laughs> Could be, but, you know, give us a, give us a call, um, please. So anyway, uh, let's see here. There were, there were not a lot of things in the news today outside of the fact that, oh, yeah, the Ukrainians bombed 
a oil depot in Russia. This is okay. And 30, the, 30 and, miles inside of Russia. And the Russians are saying, that's unfair. <laughs> you know. Wake up, Putin. It's going to hurt somebody. Putting missiles on your front lawn. Yeah, yeah. When yeah, I heard I, that, man, I cheered them. I just went, blow but, it up. Uh, yeah. Aren't uh, some of our Congress people saying that they're not supposed to use those weapons to be aggressive? It's only defensive. You know? Well, if you go after an oil depot yeah. uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Russia mm -hmm. uh, that is right over the border from Ukraine, they're probably supplying the tanks with oil and gas and diesel and so on. And so that, you know, so your Republican pals suck, okay? No, I, I don't know wasn't the Republicans, Republicans lately have been putting Putin down. Yeah, over it. and and not too happy with Trump's little conversations mm -hmm. with Putin. Well, somebody just signed in as Chris Rock. Now, who could this possibly be? Of course, of uh -huh. course. I figured. It I was like you, the Brian. way your suntan's missing. He looks like Chris Rock. I don't see the slap mark. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you April see? Hole. April Fool's. <laughs> if you didn't know. Did you see where Will Smith? Will Smith has resigned from the academy. Yeah. Well, that's that's kind of like when people resign from the administration. Uh -huh. It's They were going to get fired, but they yeah. resign. Uh, so maybe he uh, knew it was coming that they were going to uh, slap sanctions on him, so he just resigned. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. Now he should turn in his Oscar. Yes. Well, uh, I don't agree. Maybe you could trade. <laughs> Give him two Emmys for one Oscar. He can have my Emmys, yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I get to slap him in the face. Okay. And he takes it as well as Chris Rock did. I, I don't think so. I think he's a thug. Who? Uh, Will Smith. Well, you know, so here's the thing. He was the most one of the most well-loved people in Hollywood. I mean, <laughs> fan-wise, he had a very high what we call Q rating. Everybody loved Will Smith. Never heard mm -hmm. anything bad about Will Smith. Few things about his marriage and, you know, that his wife caught him cheating and things like that. I've, but, I've come to the conclusion that he's pussy-whipped and his wife is a dragon. Oh, I, I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. Um, yep. She's 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 the bitch c word in the whole situation. Myself, you haven't heard a word from her. Oh no, no, but she also is what we call passive aggressive. You know, I mean, <laughs> whatever. Oh no, me. But Will Smith. I, yeah. Will Smith did what he did, and I don't think it's excusable. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can't blame the wife or anybody else. Will Smith got up. Uh, made a choice, did what he did, smiled, sat back down, re, you know, refused. No, in the, in the, the other order, Phil, in the other order, Phil, he smiled and laughed. And then when the wife gave him the dragon eyes, he got up and bitched and slapped and then but, went back and looked at her and said, did I do good? Huh? And, and did when I he came good? back, there was an alternative shot of that. When he came back, she was laughing. Did, did you see when he was walking back from the slap, still on the stage, he was grinning. He yeah, was strutting. Yeah. Yeah. He was saying, did I do good, honey? Did I do good? I don't, I don't think so. I think he was, he was happy. A, I think he even did a little crotch tug, didn't he? Yeah. And then and then his, his son got on Twitter and said, that's how we do it. And she agreed with it. Wait a minute. Stop it, everybody. Uh, Stop it. What are we talking about this? I know. For? Why are we talking about it? Yeah, Let's well, go to something else. Uh, Bullshit. Well, yeah, because that's... Trump didn't do anything. Oh, okay. yes, he did. And that's even better. So let's move he on. He didn't slap anybody. He slapped so all of America on. when he asked uh, uh, Putin to, if he had anything on Joe Biden while I this war is going that, on in that Ukraine. Was, uh, that was something in a conversation, but not with Putin. But uh, in, a, in, a, in a just a general conversation. Well, your right boy now. looks like he's in going to be in some trouble. He looks like well, he's going to be hey, in some trouble. Hey, you know, uh, Hillary Clinton just paid what was it, one hundred and thirty thousand uh, dollars because of uh, the false uh, information, and the DNC also paid due to their uh, procurement of the uh, Steele dossier, the one that you really enjoyed uh, when it when it came out. 
Uh, oh, so, I still believe he got pee. He had he had hookers peeing on well, his bed. No, yeah. it's not that you believe it. You you wish that it was. No, true, I think right? he does because I think that's the kind of thing that Putin has on him. Well, obviously, they Putin, discredited Putin. the the steel dossier and all the who, information. Who, who, who discredited it? Uh, the whoever uh, the people who investigated it. I think it was Durham, and uh, Durham. And uh-huh. I, uh, mean, why would it, Clinton, it, it, Durham, Hillary Clinton, mean the, the, the DNC? The group why would who, Hillary Clinton the group, and the no, DNC the that pay in, that fine? The gr- uh, group that was impaneled. Well, I have to go look and see why. Fusion GPS was the. Uh, the, the ones that all they right let's paid. see with hillary clinton in the news today yeah i filled up my cup because i saw phil was on tonight yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get, get ready everybody get ready jeff is looking for it do you know anything about this uh um uh, uh me josh no josh josh do you know anything about that no not a lot i mean did you know other... did you know that they, they paid money who do they pay it to Phil. They didn't uh, pay any money. Find they find her. They, yeah, they find her. Who find yeah. her? FEC, whatever the hell that stands for, finds Clinton campaign and DNC overspending on Trump. Ah, Russia you know what? Dossier. That's not even because of the do- It's not because the dossier was wrong. No, it was because they were spending money on something they shouldn't have. Right. Because the right. FEC is what? The Federal Exchange Commission or whatever? Election? Federal Elections Commission. Federal Elections Commission. Elections Commission, right. So, I mean, that had to do with them putting the money out for it, and it had to do with finance. It didn't have to do with the fact that it was either right or wrong. Isn't uh, it funny how Phil's news... I don't think so. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll find uh, the, no, the real you, news. No, because you read everything wrong, Phil. You, you no, have, I'll find the real news. You have this. You, you have this nuclear right. You, you have this funny nuclear little right. prism you look through, in which everything yeah, it's, is not it's, as it's it called is. Conservatism. <laughs> That's my funny oh, no, prism. No, no, being for Trump is not conservatism. That's stupidity. Craziism. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what's gas now? Six fifty a gallon. Uh, out in California, what's inflation now? Eight percent. Here in New York, here. How's your boy doing? How's your boy doing? Well, he's doing very well because uh, the uh, the unemployment rate is down precipitously, and the employment rate is high. So, uh, and the uh, stock market is rebounding. Uh, so, stock you market's know. near all time highs. Is it really? Yeah. 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 So uh, the only Except thing that's a problem. Tech stocks. The only problem is. Yeah. The only problem is if you that we've got as a problem is uh, is the gas, which has a lot to do with the war that we're having right now, the war that's going on, and are not taking Russian oil. But more than that, uh, it I think the the gas companies are currently uh, gouging the public too. They're using this as an excuse to raise the prices. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't think you can consider that that <coughs> this is the doing of, of, of Biden particularly. Uh, it's, you know, just what's going on. You the know? gas companies have no problem raising the gas prices, but they have a funny problem lowering them. Lowering them. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that for years. Not the price of food, guys. Same thing. And I made the point the other night on Facebook is like they, you know, the, those trucks come like every four days or so, but they raise the, the price every single day. How do they know? They, they don't know what they're being charged for the next tanker, right? But they start raising the price every day. They do. They do. In other words, the fact that the prices went up at a certain point, they went up too early to be a reaction to what was going on. So they just raised the prices because they could and say, oh, it's the Russians and da, 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 well, da. and it's know, not. The, the gas companies don't lower prices real quick because a lot of times they bought gas at a premium a couple of weeks earlier. And well, so no, it, I can see where they would at a certain point. Let's say, let's say it's been going up. They can't bring it down immediately because they're still paying the high price. Or they had paid the high price, and now they're unloading that gas. They got to wait for the cheap gas to come in in order to unload that. That's what your problem is. 
But I mean, uh, say, is before, but they keep raising it while they have their tanker already done that they're that they're emptying, and then when that cheap one comes in, they keep raising it. If the we had very, the, if we the had two hundred and fifty thousand dollar cars complaining if, about gas prices, if we had very stringent <clears throat> rules about gouging and tough penalties for it, you would not see this going on as much. But unfortunately, what happens is it's kind of like how many here bought marijuana in the day okay <laughs> raise your hand i stole it from my dad okay what they used to do every year they would say oh there's a drought out there we're gonna have to raise the prices on pot okay and then you pay a higher price for pot and then when the drought was over the price didn't go down and that's kind of a regular thing that goes on you know that that the the uh, the art of the gouger is is to do exactly that to say there's a there's a, a paucity of something like gas can't deliver the food with the trucks and you know but the, us not having enough gas is behind you get what I'm saying it's not it's not it, as soon as they start buying stop buying gas from the Russians we shouldn't see less gas here immediately. But we see the prices go up immediately, and that's gouging, you know. Yes, uh, Jack? You know, one of the things we Americans don't understand about the oil industry, and the only reason I know about it is I'm here in Texas, and uh, my family has been selling oil for 75, 80 years mm -hmm. to one of the oil companies, and I get a little used to get a little check from that, is that at any given time, there are 20 or more super tankers on the ocean waiting to see what the spot price of oil goes up or down to. And they just sit out there and wait. They, they sit out there and wait because they're because it's casino capitalism. That's mm -hmm. what Phil is for. He's for making a bet and having it pay off. Oh, well, gambling. Or gambling, yeah. You anybody know? that's yeah. anybody that's ever bought stocks. Well, yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, and most of us in America don't own that much stock. And then it comes in and gets production price. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, it, it's pretty. Uh, uh, you know, so, I mean, to sit here and and to blame price. to blame Biden for it. I mean, and it is forget, it is going to hurt the Democrats in November. There's no question well, it's about it. It's going to hurt the Democrats if the Democrats don't drive home. Who gave us this nonsense? No, but no matter how much they own, scream it, Jack. That the, the 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 people in the middle are not going to listen to it. They, well, the people, when well, they go well, to a store and all of a sudden avocados are uh, uh, five dollars for two instead of five two four dollars for two, as mm -hmm. soon as they start seeing things like that. They just go. It's the president's fault. They don't. But, they don't. They don't logically say, "Hey, you know, it's not his." Hey, but story. Alex, you remember that old song that our folks used to sing about the rich get rich and the poor get poor. Mm -hmm. Now it's what was the song. Yeah, ain't we got fun? Is what the title is. Yeah. And the thing is, folks, today we've had too many years of good times in this country. How many? Too too many years of good times? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Come on, I, I can't or remember. Under Trump. Wait a minute, I can't remember a period of time in my lifetime where there hasn't been one tragedy after another financially. I didn't say country. there were, were no tragedies, but economically speaking, we came out of World War II as the only nation in the industrialized West that had not had devastating things happen to its infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's what grew the American middle class was World War II and the post-war era. We went from, gee, uh, uh, the time that I was born until maybe, maybe the mid-70s uh, with a couple of economic blips, you know, a couple of recessions, no depression, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we got used to, if things not getting great, at least stay in the same or maybe getting fractionally better well, for the working class. Let me ask Josh here. Josh, um, um, how do you feel about the cost of things today and why it is? Well, I mean, 
I think there's a general, you know, series of inflation going on. I mean, I, I, I see gas as a little, as a little bit separate. I mean, I think gas is mostly uh, price driven by, you know, by scam more than it is by supply versus demand. I, I mean, I think gas is unusually inflated most of the time based on any sort of excuse that can be come up with. You know, I mean, yeah. gas is just a greed organization to me, you know, um, but the overall economy, you know, is just going through a, a natural cycle of some inflation and, you know, some certain other things based on our, you know, current circumstances and some things that we've been through the last couple of years as a country. And I, I, don't, I don't think it's out of control or anything. It's it's certainly not anywhere you know, nearly uh, as bad as certain other eras. I mean, you know, it's it's just something that's there. But I think the good news in most cases, as opposed to other times, maybe is economically we're doing well enough and the labor market has been in a certain uh, degree that a lot of employers have been able to raise wages to help keep up with some of that, you know, I mean, I know of a lot of companies that did so. Um, I'm not saying everybody did, so I'm sure you have yeah. people listening that, you know, say, you know, shit, I didn't get a raise. But a lot of your large, you know, large corporations and stock market companies and stuff like that gave out uh, general raises, even in the middle of the year, not even at their normal time or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, because they saw that the job market, um, was such that if they didn't, you know, people could leave and, you know, easily find a, another job that was just competitive or even paid more than theirs. So I don't think economically anything really has gotten out of control. Phil had his hand up there, Phil. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've kind of figured that this is a perfect storm, what's happening now, because uh, the reason that I can't hire anybody is that all my baby boomer salespeople retired. And you know what? I think that that's what's happening across the nation. Because of COVID, uh, people realize that there are alternative jobs. They change their attitudes about why they work and what's important to them. And then when you have all the baby boomers retiring at this point, uh, there's a shortage of workers. And, and people in uh, the new generations, the younger generations, uh, don't want the traditional way of, of working. They're happy with the gig economy. They're happy living in their parents' basement. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's why, uh, you know, we're having this, this job shortage, this employee but, shortage. But, but wait a minute, but you went from one topic to another topic. <laughs> no, I, I was uh, talking about what Josh was talking about. He, uh, he said that there were, um, uh, you know, uh, the people uh, uh, they not getting hired in the workforce. Uh, Josh, wh exactly what did you say that, you know, that uh, uh, made me uh, comment on that? Well, I mean, people are getting hired. I mean, that jobs are available. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just not. Uh, I'm just saying employers were sort of forced to raise wages for the first time in a long time because the demand for employers was there but they were not able to keep up with demand for basically for two reasons one because the supply chain was having issues and two because they themselves could not fulfill their needed headcounts and that was also adding problems for the supply chain because right. downstream those yeah. people couldn't find workers in a lot of cases either so a lot of them were forced to raise wages because you could quit your job and go somewhere else and get one that paid more you know yeah, right. so, or, or let me let me let me, let, let, me, let me say this that right. that uh part of the problem you have now is that it's harder for people like phil to find employees because a lot of people are sick and tired of working for somebody and yeah, so if they, wait, 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 let me finish tony okay. please uh, and what people have a tendency to do now is they're trying to make their own way in this world without having to have an employer 
Uh, mm -hmm. And they're doing things like it, whether you do a podcast or you do some kind of uh, SD merchandising or any, any stuff like that. That's the reason why you haven't got as many people looking for jobs as we're uh, looking for jobs before. I say screw it. I got Tupperware. Look, look what I paid on Wednesday for gas. 16 and a half gallons. Yeah, and how much, how much was it per gallon? Six dollars, uh, five ninety nine or six dollars. That's because you live in California. Here in New York, it's about four forty three. I heard. So yeah, you know. look, I, I've never for I, you know I've had that car eleven years. I've never had to put a hundred dollars worth of gas in it at one. <clears throat> you know, now, if you look at gas prices here where I'm at, we're around three eighty nine, three ninety on the high end. But, but 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 one of the things I want to point out. And uh, about this question of people and jobs, with those of us who are, quote, baby boomers, unquote, mm -hmm. uh, retiring, we were the largest demographic bulge of the century. Mm -hmm. And there are fewer in the uh, X gen and the next gen or whatever they're calling themselves. Mm -hmm. There are fewer people, so therefore... There are fewer people to take jobs. But, you know, when I was born and when Alex was born, you know, it was kind of unusual for people to have less than two kids per family. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Three, yeah. Let's pause yeah, here four. for Phil to make a joke about my age. Go ahead, Phil. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I was just going to tell Ray that his green screen. Uh, there you go. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, you know, hey, I'm catching up to you. Uh, I, I better I better stop making well, jokes. You can't, no, you can't catch up to me. You know, it, it, there's no way. You're still always going to be the same distance behind me. But maybe. You're how old now? Uh, I'll be 68 in June. 68. Oh, a youngster. Okay. A kid. So you're, you're, you're 14 years younger than I am. Right now, yeah. Don't but, you stop aging at a certain point? No, believe me, you don't. Uh, no, when they, yes. when they put you in the box and throw the dirt on top of you. Well, then you're except you're, you're probably going to outlive me. Your so. fingernails probably. keep growing. Yes, uh, uh, Brian. As a person who's hiring a couple hundred people at a time right now, and yeah. Lodi, we're having no problems. Yeah, no. And Lodi, nobody's employed in Lodi. You, you could, you, you know, it's, it's Lodi. We get people from uh, Elk Grove, from uh, all, all that, all that area there, all the way down oh, to Stockton. Central Valley. What, what, what do you attribute to that? What kind of package do you offer these people that are attracting hundreds of people that should be coming to my store, but are yeah, going to your place? I don't know. We, we labeled that as a risk when we were going through all of our, all of our exercises for that, that, factory because we didn't know what we would see and we're just getting just tons of people still looking but let me just on. say by the way phil that if uh, they had a difference between working for you or working for brian i think you're taking a walk okay uh, i i don't know uh, you know i i provide massages well you know, oh big trouble but you also you know <laughs> as you were as you wrote me you can actually have a pretty big business selling carpet for the sides of tanks the Russian yeah, tanks. Yeah. <laughs> that was very cute. It seems uh, that for camouflage, they're using uh, carpeting on the side of. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it said uh, uh, Russian tanks are using carpet and twigs as camouflage. Yeah. So I said, it looks like uh, the carpet business is thriving in the Ukraine. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Jack. Yeah, I want to point out something uh, when we start talking about the prices of gasoline. Most years, if you compare the price of a gallon of gasoline to a gallon of milk, milk is most more expensive. You know, and your point is, try putting milk in your gas tank. And I don't yeah. drink ten gallons of milk a day. <laughs> yeah. What do you pay? What do you pay for decent bottled water? Well, you can get cheap water. You, know, uh, get, out of the well, you can get cheap water, but uh, bottled water is what do you I believe, pay? more expensive than gasoline yeah and, and, and why do we need that this is about a dollar i think you know yeah. you know the water that comes out of my tap is pretty damn good and i like it 
Yeah, you don't live in Walnut Creek or Concord. By so. the way, uh, no. uh, Tony, did you have your hand up earlier? Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say, though. Uh, Tony, oh, you're good. probably going to say that you don't want to go back to work either, sure. and you're going to do your own but thing. I, I think I wouldn't mind really working with somebody, Alex, but you know what? It has to be something. It have to be part time. I don't mean this condescending. And you know what? I'd have to. I wouldn't want to be tied to somebody unless I really needed the money. Yeah. And I think people don't want to stay in jobs anymore. These younger kids, if I'm guessing, is if they don't feel there's any growth. Did, by, by, by the way, did your did your uncle find anybody to replace you uh, in your no, wonderful he, job of making? No, they can't. I went down to visit. Tell them what you not... used to do. Tell them what you used to do. This is uh, this is the kind of job that if any of you fine. had it. You would go uh, nuts, okay? I did go crazy. I literally, I didn't mind. Uh, the believe work. me, you were crazy before that. But what was what was the job exactly? Actually, I just pulled hats and caps all day and listened to show tunes and made hat boxes. And made hat. I, used, boxes. I had a good memory, so I can memorize things pretty good. I knew what the. But well, that's why oh, you like me. And yeah. Tony, yeah. you used to change the labels if you yeah, didn't you have change, large. Yeah. You took a medium and you put a large and put label. The other ones didn't fake them and they throw it in the box and yeah. I wanted to get out of there. Yeah. But, uh, That's called fraud. <laughs> it is. So, so, by the way, Congress is yeah. currently about to pass a, bu a bill <clears throat> legalizing, marijuana. legalizing marijuana federally. <clears throat> what do you think of that? I can't I'll believe it. That's Disneyland. <clears throat> I think it's I think it's terrific because the fact is that as long as the federal government continues to make it illegal, uh, banks cannot deal with these dispensaries. Federal banks. Oh really? Federal banks. I think federally lo insured banks. Federally insured banks, which could be local, local banks, but uh, so they've had to go to credit unions to to stuff their money. Uh, uh, and uh, a lot of other places. It, it's been a real problem. And the government, part of the bill is that, number one, they will legalize marijuana, won't, won't make it illegal anymore. And secondly, they are going to forgive all the convictions for marijuana sales over the years. Okay, and uh, yeah. And what they will do is if you were found guilty of selling marijuana, they will allow the federal government to um, um, finance your organization. In other words, if you want to open up a store, the government will help finance it. Oh, uh, shit. So if you sold pot, you could open up a store now. Yes, absolutely. And, 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 and the last part of that is they want 5% tax on marijuana. Yeah, but they want 6% tax on food. But, you know, what they were saying was if you were busted for marijuana, that they'll give you priority over opening up a store. No, that's here in New York. Oh. That's here in New York. Yeah. Federally, uh, I don't think that's the deal, but what they will do is help finance your your <laughs> endeavor. Okay. And there was another thing that came up today, and, and you guys probably didn't catch this, but uh, a bill was introduced today to Congress to cap the price of insulin at $25. You know, for those of us that have had to use insulin, like my copay every month is $240, $250. Well, just be honest, uh, uh, Jack. Yes. I mean, uh, you just like shooting up. <laughs> well, it does come in handy. You know, <laughs> does keep my that does keep my street cred good. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but anyway, so uh, it it's you know uh, it'll be good if the federal government just gets this off the books altogether. Uh, you know, so well, you know, it didn't go on the books until uh, what the mid thirties. It was the it was the, um, uh, the marijuana stamp tax act of nineteen thirty four. I think it was seven. 37 was, was and, it and what it was it didn't make marijuana illegal it made it illegal for you to sell it without buying a marijuana stamp and a marijuana stamp was so prohibitively priced that nobody was going to pay that money so whenever they got busted they got busted on a tax charge this was federally locally different different laws applied <clears throat> uh, but uh, federally if you got busted with marijuana and you didn't have a stamp uh, you were you were thrown in jail for a long time for that, 
you know. uh, was it the uh, book 1984 that they uh, said uh, you know the people wanted this stuff called soma so and yeah. Uh, yeah and I thought soma might have been Starbucks people waiting in line saying give me two shots and double <laughs> no, pump no and wasn't so that forth. brave new world that was brave oh, new and, world. oh brave new world I, I I knew it was one of them yeah. uh, that's why I asked but the uh you know maybe this marijuana thing no is, you didn't know it was the, one of them because you said 1984. oh well, you know you, you read those both those books in high school around the same time well there's one but, other uh, there's one other he wrote too called ape and essence which was yeah, very, very good very good so anyway what what the situation is, is maybe this new this marijuana stuff and how it's going nationally it's the new soma you know, and all of those things are coming true. Brave New World, yeah. What, so, well, it's, only, Starbucks is Soma? Are you out of no, your mind? No, Starbucks I thought was Soma, but truly it's going to be national uh, marijuana. No, we have a no. drink. So, and the, Soma, the stores, wait a minute, hold on a second. Soma was, brought, was created for fictional purposes by Aldous Huxley, who had been experimenting with things like mushrooms and so on. And in fact, I think was in on some of the early tests but, on LSD. But the people were lining up for this stuff. Yeah, but it was a Just like they do at the marijuana store. You know, they uh, they wait online. And do you know the government during COVID, marijuana stores were allowed to stay open, but carpet stores, no. You know, that was that was a maybe, real COVID. Maybe you, ought to, maybe you got a big store, Phil. Maybe you ought to sell marijuana in the corner of it. How do you know I'm not? Get him high and then get him into the rug store to get him some some rugs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always thought we'd never uh, decriminalize or legalize marijuana because we like our uh, drugs to make us outgoing. And I don't know about anybody else here on the panel, but back when I smoked marijuana, I wanted to go over in the corner and get small. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I always withdrew. Yeah, I yeah. I was a quiet drunk too. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, the thing is that uh, I always tell the story about years ago. My friend and I, uh, uh, P. J. O'Rourke, were at my apartment, uh, and we were sitting on the. I remember we were sitting on the rug. Again, I was against a beanbag chair, and he was leaning up against a couch, and we were passing a joint back and forth. And he said, "Someday, this is going to be legal." And wow. uh, and I, it, chair? We, we, I had one of those. We too. thought it would be we <laughs> thought it would be closer than it was. I mean, let's face it. I mean, PJ didn't live long enough to see it federally legalized. You know, so I mean, what was the name of that uh, a group that was trying to legalize marijuana in the seventies? They they normal. Used to have the normal. Yeah. Liberation well, I was involved. I was involved, oh. I was involved <laughs> with normal in the very beginning. And what I did was I and I, as some, as a friend of mine I found an old film lying around uh, called Reefer Madness. Mm -hmm. And nor, Normal, we gave it to, we, he gave it to Normal. And Normal used it to promote Normal and to raise money for Normal by showing it at theaters. It became a very big midnight movie picture. That people love to see because it's it, even to this day it's a totally laughable film, but uh, uh, we were involved in getting that thing going and promoting it and so on and so forth. So I was there at the very beginning of Normal. Uh, Keith uh, Schropp, I think, was the guy's name who was uh, the uh, the head of the head of Normal at the time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you had your hand up, uh, Alan. Did you have your hand up? No. No, I was. My camera keeps going out of focus, and so I was playing. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, your microphone. Yeah. So you know, I mean, I think I think it's it's wonderful that we're you know we've gotten to the point, but you know, all these things are happening too late in my life. You know, I mean, we're going to go to Mars. Well, I wanted us to go to Mars thirty years ago so I could see it. But, ah, once you see, once you see the moon, there's no need to go to Mars. Well, I don't know if I'm going to live long enough for us to you know, land on the moon. We better do it by 2024, okay. like they getting, say. What? We're getting pictures from the Mars rover. I mean, th th this is pretty amazing stuff that we're able to get. We don't have to necessarily. We don't forget go there. pictures. Go there and be able to shoot them with your iPhone. Okay. Yeah, really. You know, I mean, you know, let's. The trouble is, is, Martians look like Trump. 
Well, what's the temperature? Dip their what's green the, instead of orange. What's the temperature on Mars? Uh, it, it, it varies it, a lot. It, it, it pretty. It, I don't think it's warm at all. I think it's pretty cold because so there's no atmosphere. Where, we there, couldn't there exist without like, some sorry. sort of a, a housing, right? What? No matter how cold Mars is, it's still going to be warmer than San Francisco on a summer's night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what was what was it? What was it? Somebody once said uh, 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 the cold uh, the coldest uh, night uh, I've uh, ever I've ever experienced was uh, was uh, the summer, summer in Mars, San Francisco. Mars, Mars said the coldest day. The coldest day I've ever had. No, no the the coldest winter. We'll get this I've down ever eventually. Summer, summer in San Francisco. Yeah, summer yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. It was a song, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. What I, I left my balls in San Francisco. Oh, no, no, it was it the uh, Jepson Starship or in uh, San airplane? Francisco? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. The coldest day I ever had was a summer in San Francisco. Well, that's the, you're ad libbing there, Ray. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's doing all right. He's doing yeah, okay. but he's going to get him delisted. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, no. You know, Quick it. story. I took my wife to San Francisco for the first time about a year after we got married. Yeah. And I kept telling her, uh, we were going in August, and I kept telling her, pack a coat, pack a coat. <laughs> she didn't believe me. We got off the plane. We left Dallas when it was going to be a high of 102. We got off the plane five hours later in San Francisco. It had already reached the high of the day of 63. And she said, I don't have a coat. I said, I kept telling you the pack of coaches. She said, I saw all those movies with Frankie and, and Annette and California. Who needs a coat here? That's Southern California. That's Southern. That's right. That's the other California. Nothing... Anywhere out of San Francisco. Not... It's going to be 90 here in the uh, 40 we, in San Francisco. We will, we will soon see what politics has settled down to. Sarah Palin is going to run for the vacated house seat. Oh, God. By, by the no. way, you're over-modulating. Yeah, yeah. Alan, your microphone is... I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, Alan, just uh, click click the... Uh, you have automatic mic clicked, most likely, uh, in your settings. In just unclick it. Okay. Yeah, anyway. I uh, have to do that with mine. Yeah, I... Uh, um, you, know, I uh, you know what I miss most about San Francisco? I miss the fog. Oh, yeah. and the fog horns. There is nothing. One night I, I went back to California and I was there with a girlfriend or something. I can't remember who I took out there. And we were walking through the North Beach and the fog rolled in. Yeah. And I said, is there anything more romantic than this? You know, it was just such a wonderful feeling, you know. And, and that air is so great to breathe. It's, really, it's oh, so breathing it is just incredible. I love it. And, and the wind was, blows all the crap out of the air from the bay. You know, the bay, the wind comes in through the Golden Gate and it clears the air uh, and, uh, you know, gives you very clean air. What we did I, have when I was a kid, when I was a kid and when I was a teenager, and, and Jack Pryor remembers this. Covered wagons? No, we had real <laughs> foghorns. Yeah. And, and the foghorns would almost talk to each other. You'd hear one over here, meow, and then another one would go, meow. Yeah, and, and they were different sounding foghorns. And yeah, eventually, had- they decided they didn't need them anymore because all the ships had radar and didn't need foghorns to keep them from crashing into the rocks. No, so they, they wait a minute, like let me finish. Digital. So they turned them all off. And San Franciscans got so mad about that, they wound up on these rocks putting a big thing with a sound effect of a foghorn. Oh, that's so, what that was. Yeah, they were they were not real foghorns. The I reason you could tell the difference is they were all the same pitch and same sound. That's true, they were. Do you remember yeah. when uh, we actually had ferry boats in San Francisco? Yes. They, yeah. They still do. I know people who commute on the really? ferry. Yeah. I thought yeah. they got rid what of ferry? them. What ferry? They're actually here. adding some now. Oh, yeah. they're going to be adding some. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's getting more popular. A lot of people from Marin going on a ferry. What happened is if you came from, say, New York and you <clears throat> came to San Francisco, you got off uh, in Oakland, was where the furthest the trains would come, and then you had to take a, um, um, a what do you call it, a ferry across the bay and you would wind up at the ferry building in san francisco and that was that was as far as you could come directly now i think the trains come all the way around and everything like that but 
Hill? That's the U.S. Mint, not the Ferry Building. No, that's uh, San Quentin. No, that, no. Wait a minute. Is that San oh, Quentin? No, that, no. Yeah, Don't you have an inside view? Oh yeah, right. In your cell? San Quentin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not San Quentin. My, you know, my, my, fa bay. my father used to swim around that. Really? Yeah, swim around really? it. Yeah. Uh, when he was younger. So did Jack Lalane. Yeah. Did, oh, yeah. look, there's Adrian. Bye, Adrian. Oh, no, come say hi. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like her blonde hair. She just said, uh, why does this say Chris Rock? <laughs> what is what was she what was she pointing out? She said, "Why does it say Chris Rock?" Oh, oh, oh she your was name. On her computer and yeah. saw it. Uh, yeah, they, they, yeah, she, uh, yeah, yeah, they're they're horse play. You know, they're messing around at school today. They're tickling each other, mm -hmm. and she hit her head on the table. So oh, her head, she is okay. Uh, really? Yeah, she's just you know. This is you all checked out. You, you know, get a little scratch, and she wants it. She wants a a band aid. Oh my gosh, she's so... And ice she's cream. Gonna get, you're going to get hurt much more than that one day. She's got... Oh, look. She's going to draw oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Dance picture. It. Very nice. She's, she makes this on here, and then she'll draw it. So she creates this on here on an app, and then she'll draw it. So oh, that's very smart. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. It's mixed mix match day, so she has different socks on and different color stuff. Is she, is she at that I, age where where she's good company for you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that'll disappear. <laughs> Don't worry. That'll go away, you know. Yeah, you, know you know why I wear black T-shirts, black underwear, black socks, black pants? Uh, because I never have to worry about I don't have to worry about mismatching. I get up at four in the morning. I just grab stuff, and it doesn't matter. It all goes together. No, you think you're Rachel Maddow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> then it would be leather pants. Leather pants. Yeah. Anyway, so um, uh, you know, it's been uh, it's been kind of a, a light week this week. Nobody's going crazy on anything in particular. I don't know, looks like uh, looks like uh, Josh. Looks like we're going to get a new Supreme Court justice. It looks like she's going to be affirmed. Good. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine she won't be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I think she's going to be okay. I like her. You know, I like the way she comported herself with those assholes. You know, Jeez. they were asking him some of the most stupid questions I've ever heard. You know? Oh, they were Republicans. Yes. No, don't, don't say that. You know, there are people. My, one of my closest friends that we have around here, he isn't here very often, but I talk to him at least once a week, is Patrick Blazik, and he's a Republican. Hello? And he's a conservative. Well, Patrick is a conservative. He's not really the current generation of Republicans. He, he, yeah, but I mean, just to, to say that about Republicans, lump I, everybody. I, I just there are going to be Republicans now, like Susan Collins, who are not you know just traveling with the crowd, you know. So I mean, it, Collins is is voting for uh, the uh, the Supreme Court right, nominee, right? Lindsey Graham, who voted for her as a uh, what a uh, yeah, a, 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 federal, pellet. a pellet judge uh, won't vote for. Why? If you voted for her once before, I don't think she's changed much. You know, I kind of like Donald Trump. He uh, he gave money to Biden, and, not Biden, but Obama and and Hillary, mm -hmm. and then turned into their enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, business people do usually give to both parties. By the way. Absolutely. You know, they hedge their bets that way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, but uh, Disney ain't going to give money to the Florida governor, however. Oh, they're they, threatening to sue Disney over this yeah, they, No, they want to make Disney pay more for uh, uh, to not be an independent kind of municipality unto itself. And yet they have their own fire department. They have their own police departments, all of that. And they'd Alex, be ha happy to keep it that way. Yeah. What was the count and the amount on your survey? Oh, 85% said, no, I shouldn't quit. That I'm not that dissipated and falling apart. Anyway, we just lost, uh, we just lost Jack and we lost, yeah. who else? We lost one other person. I can't well, Jack has to do his thing. But yeah, right. It's work. But anyway, thanks to Kevin. I appreciate it. Kevin, always appreciate it. Uh, J Jeff, thank you very much. Jazzy Jeff, love the thank Fresh you. Prince. 
uh, 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 Alan, thank you. Thank you, Josh. Hopefully you'll see you later this weekend. Uh, also, thank you, Phil. Always nice to have you here. I love abusing you. Uh, Brian, thank you for being here. Uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, you know, uh, oh boy, I'm just out of it now. Uh, Tony, oh, Tony, thank you. And Ray, thank you. Uh, all of you, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big <clears throat> wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. I'm waving, I'm waving, I'm waving. I'm dissolving to me, okay? Now they're going away. Thanks to all of them for being here. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully see them again really soon. And we'll see you really soon. Like next Monday, uh, we're back here. Uh, 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 at uh, 4 o'clock Eastern on Facebook with our pop-up show and then we'll be back here again next Wednesday at 10.30 Eastern Time uh, for more of the Ramble. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.